Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Look at that one. It is a Thompson Bridge type AE531. <laughs> it is in a 10 kilo wooden case. I better open this one for you. I really don't know how old this one is, but I'm definitely going to find out. I'm going to Google like crazy. Look at this. So you can measure really, really tiny, tiny resistance value. So this is the measurement range. Are you crazy? It is going to be able to measure tiny, tiny resistors. And so maybe I should show a little a principle a diagram of a Thomson bridge. So the main idea is that we can pull a huge current through the unknown resistor. And we're doing this here. Look at those big hefty screw terminals so here is the main resistor mounted and then the sense point so it's of course it has to be like a kelvin resistor a four um connection um to that uh resistor right so this is where the current flows and these two goes of course to the resistor to compensate for the loss in the wires to the current so this is uh, how you measure the voltage over the resistor that you want to measure all right so this is your unknown so here you go you plug in a two volt lead acid battery and it's uh, capable of doing 50 amps <laughs> how about that and then you put all that current through that resistor and through the other resistor that's in here by adjusting the different settings here how many amps you want yeah and then i think what you do is you dial for zero on one of these i can't remember and that's just the range and you dial for zero on one of these and then you have an external potentiometer here and this is also where you dial and then you read zero on that meter so the point is you want to adjust the external resistor to reach exactly zero on the meter and when you have this then this resistor here is a factor of the unknown okay I think it's like a thousand or a yeah i think the factor where the heck is the factor it is this one right so it's a factor of 110 or 100 of that resistor that is the unknown resistor or something like that uh, maybe i'm missing it a little bit but it's it's sort of the point of what is going on here and you can imagine this thing is from 1920, 30, something like that. It's really, really old. Before uh, we could uh, measure and amplify and read out stuff, we could only compare stuff. Uh, I mean, that was the only way to do accurate measurements. And I think that is so, so fascinating. And definitely, um, you could easily amplify or read out a difference and then go to zero but exactly how much it is it's not relevant it is only the zero that is impo important for this uh, measurement and there's a little uh, magnifying glass here so you can easily see exactly where is zero and then the equal the, uh, the two equal uh, resistors they uh, kind of balance out the the difference right so I think we should try and open this thing and see what is inside. It's getting more and more nice. Ah, I didn't, I didn't actually know. We could go. 
more wrenches and what else have we got? What is that doing here? So that is an extra little thingy that was hidden here. So this one is probably used for some calibration or something. So this is a tool and it was hidden right there. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. I probably need this in a minute. And then we have this readout dial. Oh, it's not grabbing too well. I had to remove these to get this uh, front plate out. And I expect uh, that will be lifting handles. And then what do I do now? Do I unscrew all? Ooh, look at that. We have a seal. And this is very normal for this company, Gertz. They use this type of seal in many of their instruments. So I have to break the seal. I'm sorry, folks. But that's just how it is, because I really want to see what is inside this unit. That is the whole idea of this video. Oh, this thing definitely doesn't disappoint what a fantastic unit see if you remember what i explained about the battery input or the two volt input here right and this is our test resistor where we will pull the power through and then the current goes to our first uh, reference variable resistor here and it consists of a shunt right there so where main current goes this way out through the shunt right there but then there's of course a part of that current that goes via this big winding and we can tap into this on our reading okay so this is just creating a tiny little millivolt offset or this is the center point we're trying to find right so this point here goes to uh, some resistors with all the different tapping here look at that oh, this is one amazing resistor tap or oh, they sand it a little here to adjust for the different values and then the current goes i think you can actually see this this way here and i believe this switch here is the test on off test so this is just a uh, yeah the big push button here at the front amazing switch that can handle all this current and then all those resistors you see here and here, that will be the test current where you uh, adjust the or set the test current. This is all it does and then it goes back to the battery. So this is the voltage from the test. So this is a Kelvin connection. And uh, here is the, uh, I think this is a compare or the readout value. And then it goes to all the different ranges so now we will compare this one with that one and then we can fine-tune the voltage with that one and then we can go to zero via all those different settings it's just an amazing setup here and those switches are absolutely amazingly designed uh, those two they flip the other way around so we can't really see the top but we're lucky this one is a double so we can actually see the top part of it and this is how it works with a big hefty blade that goes down here and it's actually quite a lot of them side by side and then they go all the way over here and connect to the other side so when you turn this around you will grind a deep connection down to the metal you can see how shiny it is and this is because it's digging its way 
down to the metal as you turn this uh, switch and creating a super super good contact with close to zero resistance in that uh, contact and that's of course all the different ranges um, resistors made of all sorts of fancy smancy wires it looks like copper wire but that is definitely not the case this is a temperature stable um, wire also I want to show you something look at it from this direction those resistors are just amazing <laughs> the different tapping and all that really really yeah a work of art um, the three smallest ones look at the interesting way the wires here they go first in this direction and then up and down and back again and all three here they are make, made exactly like that and that is for a reason and uh, that is a low inductance sort of way I mean why do they do this because this is a DC product so I don't understand exactly why they want to do this maybe it has something to do with uh, thermal maybe it's better like that when it's heating up or something like that you can really see that they're trying to to make this unit uh, yeah good because uh, it will get warm right and you can see the holes here in the inside the cabinet the cabinet is also really really beautifully made and of course uh, well ventilated i also found a um, schematic uh, online i think it matches more or less the fundamental uh, unit here i'm i mean i really want to show you this uh, schematic it is from a um, some sort of a math test or some technical test of some sort and it's just a small little snip uh, in a very uh, low quality but i think you'll see the point it looks a lot like this uh, unit and uh, this unit is of course not a unique unit this is how many of those units were made more or less uh, the same uh, way in um, in the back in the old old days and i'm still not able to find anything about its age i'm super sad about that and uh, i think i will probably play a little bit more with this tomorrow and uh, now it's late and i want to go to bed so